from the men's lightweight eights to the men's heavy eights. And on the course right now, uh, separated by just a seat in the first 500 meters, there's the Everett Association in lane one, BNRA Mercer in lane two, Dallas United lane three, Chicago lane four, CRI lane five, and Oakland Strokes in lane six. And they are just separated by a deck, all six of these boats in this race. And this will uh, possibly be quite exciting among the heavy eights in the D finals here at the uh, Youth National Championships. As the boat from CRI, with the distinctive red, is just slightly out ahead, but not assertively out ahead. There are too many things happening on the course right now with these six boats to really give anybody a firm grasp of the lead but CRI at least from the angle we have from the drone is just uh, maybe a foot or two ahead and the bow ball over the number uh, lane three boat from Dallas United. It's a beautiful thing to see here at this national championship when you have crews literally from every corner of the country here uh, coming Everett out of Washington. We have the PNRA obviously out of New Jersey, Dallas, Texas, you know, Illinois, uh, Massachusetts, and California. So everyone across the country is, is, is represented here in this race. Look at all those athletes. Look at this shot here. All the coaches following in the background. A beautiful sight to see this competition that close together as we race down the lake here at Nathan Benderson Park in uh, Sarasota, Florida for the 2019 U.S. Rowing Youth National Championships. CRI out ahead by two seats over the boat from Dallas United. Uh, no one is very far behind at all, and it's too early in the race to really say anybody is uh, dominating or even has the advantage all these boats still very much in contact with each other and this could set up for quite a finish in the second half. You might see Oakland here just starting to fall just slightly off of the pace but it's a very 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 small margin as all these boats across do have contact here. It's in these races where you have more than just one crew next to you and you have that many bodies you can see in the picture just how many people are side by side. This is the type of race where your ability to stay internal is really tested to maintain your rhythm and really race your race. Sometimes you'll see crews shorten up a little bit, get a little bit tense, and it really doesn't take much. Uh, a little bit of tension in the hand can prevent the blade from going in the water cleanly and creating that pure efficiency that you need the whole way down the race course. We talk about keeping your head in the boat that, you know, is keeping your, your head centered, focused on the rower in front of you. And with that many people around you, it is difficult not to sneak a little glance over your left shoulder, sneak a little glance to your right, I admit test I've out and see what's going on. I would admit that I've done it a time or two, usually not. But uh, in those big moments where you, sometimes the coxswain will say, this is where you are. And you're like, really? This is where we, okay, this is where we are. Yes, I trust what this person is saying. And this is what I need to do. Keep doing it. In this angle, CRI has a three-seat advantage right now over Dallas United out in front of the pack, but no one is being left behind. Oakland Strokes uh, slightly behind, but the rest of them are all in contact. Everyone is within a, a boat length of CRI, so this is still a very close race. But Dallas United in the second right now with the boat from Chicago. Remember, they're in lane four. They had the fastest qualifying speed for this D final. So they may, as we had seen in that earlier race, begin to sneak up on those leaders. And as we come into this last 500 of the race, in a boat this big, they're going to have the fastest 500s of the boats that we've seen all day today because the men's eight, heavy eight, is the fastest boat class that we have uh, when it comes to rowing. And so as you come down to this last 500, it's the shortest amount of time. So these are the boats that are able to sprint sooner. They're able to start, really go, turn on the afterburners. You mentioned with Atomic earlier today, turn on those nuclear jets, you know, <laughs> coming down to this last bit. So when you get nine people on a roll it is a steamroller and they can absolutely ramp up tons of speed increase the boat speed by a lot in just two or three hundred meters CRI still in the lead but Oakland Strokes Chicago Dallas United all right there with them Everett Association on the far side and lane one also beginning to make the move but CRI trying to maintain that lead as they begin to hear the 
The cheers from the crowd on the beach here at Nathan Benderson Park begin to feel that adrenaline rush as they know they are close to the end. Despite being on the red line, despite their radiators beginning to overheat, here they are continuing to push and push and head towards that finish line in the D final of the men's eights. It is CRI in the lead. Dallas United beginning to push them. Chicago trying to make a move between them. Everett Association also trying to move. Oak Oakland Strokes is there. PNRA Mercer trying to keep up as everyone begins to crank it up. Here comes Chicago. Here comes Dallas United. Dallas United beginning to walk up on the CRI boat. So is Chicago. They're coming down to the line. 20 meters to go. CRI still in the lead. They cross the finish line. And it is the red bow of CRI winning the D final for the men's eight. It is Dallas United in second. And close behind there, the Chicago boat in third. It is Oakland Strokes in fourth, then Everett Association and PNRA Mercer. What a finish there. You could see those boats moving, Lindsay, and you could, you know, 